Question 5a. Compare the relative acidity of benzoic acid, phenylmethanol, and phenol. Explain your answer. So first, you need to list out the most acidic uh, to the least acidic. The most acidic uh, compound is the benzoic acid because benzoic acid is, has the COOH there. Whenever you see the COOH, so it's uh, kind of like a most acidic uh, among the, the others uh, compared to phenol and uh, ethanol or the alcohol. So why this one is the most acidic? Because the COOH, the carbonyl group in the COOH is electron withdrawing means if you pull or withdraw electrons towards the uh, oxygen and eventually if you weaken the OH bond so this is the first effect of the carbonyl group so the carbonyl group we say that it has negative inductive effect means electron withdrawing uh, um, these uh, effects so after that it will weaken OH bond so second effect is what second effect is it will stabilize this anion or this carboxylate why is stabilize this carboxylate because the CO double bond this carbonyl group is still electron withdrawing if you actually let this charge negative on the oxygen lesser so when the charge density uh, uh, on the oxygen is lesser so we say that it's less likely to bond with the H plus here and we say that it's more stable means the carboxylate ion is more stable and less likely to bond with H plus because of this electron withdrawing groups. So that's how you explain the carboxylic acid. Why is more acidic? After that, it's better for you to explain least acidic because it's easier. So let's look at this um, phenylmethanol. Phenylmethanol is actually um, similar to the normal alcohol because the OH is bond to CH2 is an alkyl group and the alkyl group is has electron donating ability so it has electron donating nature so eventually if you strengthen the OH bond here so therefore we know that this OH bond is stronger and hard to break so less H plus will form. Uh, that's why what you need to mention for this phenylmethanol is the presence of positive inductive effects of the COCH2 or electron donating nature of the CH2 group strengthen the OH bond. Uh, so this we call positive inductive effects. So when this bond is strengthened again, the, this OH bond hard to break, the hydrogen ion form is lesser, so it's therefore less acidic. Uh, you can explain the phenol as well, because uh, the phenol somehow is still more acidic than this uh, phenylmethanol. Why the phenol is more acidic than this phenylmethanol? you can discuss on the delocalization so um, okay phenol is here so we know that oxygen is has a lone pair so the lone pair it can delocalize in the ring right so when the lone pair delocalize in the ring so uh, indirectly we say that it's weakened the OH bond here it weakens the OH bond but somehow, uh, for this question, you just need to list out the trend and the two points. If you want to explain for phenol, 
it's okay, just go ahead. Nine separate experiments is carried out as shown in table 5.1. Complete the table by placing a tick in the relevant box if a reaction occurs. Place a cross in the table in the box uh, if no reaction occurs. Uh, so let's start with benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a stronger acid than uh, the two compound. So therefore, it can react with all these uh, reagents. So it can react with sodium to form hydrogen gas. It can react with sodium hydroxide okay, to form the salt and water. It's a neutralization. And it can react with this uh, sodium carbonate from CO2. So therefore, this, all this you just put a tick there. For the phenylmethanol, it behaves uh, just like a normal alcohol. Therefore, it just will react with the sodium and of course it will form hydrogen gas and for this uh, phenylmethanol is not really acidic enough to react with this uh, sodium hydroxide so it will no, have no reaction and of course it's not really acidic enough to react with sodium carbonate so put the cross here phenol is a stronger acid so it can react with the sodium okay, and form sodium phenoxide and hydrogen gas and of course, phenol can react with uh, the alkaline solution, sodium hydroxide, to form phenoxide and water. So phenol is, uh, also cannot react with the carbonate, so just a cross here. Only the carboxylic acid can react with the carbonate. C part 1. Benzoyl chloride. This one can be synthesized by reaction of benzoic acid either using PCl5 or SOCl2. Complete the equation for these two reactions. Uh, this is quite easy. Um, when we use PCl5, okay, we know that this OH from the uh, this uh, benzoic acid will remove and one of the H will combine with the Cl here to form HCl and the O will combine with the P right, to form uh, the compounds later and one chlorine from the PCl5 will combine with the C here to form the this benzoyl chloride. So at the end it will form HCl POCl3 and the benzoyl chloride. So similar things happen for this SOCl2 with the benzoic acid. OH will remove. The H will combine with 1Cl here to form the HCl. OH combined with the Cl. From HCl and the O here will combine with the S to form SO2 and one chlorine here will combine with the C to form the benzoyl chloride. So therefore it will form SO2 and HCl. Part 2. Use your answer in part 1 suggest why it is easier to isolate in a pure form the benzoyl chloride from reaction 2 compared to reaction 1. Uh, this is actually quite uh, difficult for those who don't know the state. Um, we know that the SO2 and HCl they are both gases form. So therefore once the SO2 and the HCl form, then it will just uh, remove and uh, the benzoyl chloride will remain. So therefore, the separation is going to be very easy because these two will remove automatically. But for reaction 1, after the reaction is finished, the HCl is a white film, but the POCl3 is liquid. 
so it will stay with the benzoyl chloride so means it's harder to uh, isolate them compared to reaction 2 that's the reason why part D benzoyl chloride is hydrolyzed by water at room temperature to form benzoic acid complete the diagram to show the mechanism for the reactions between benzoyl chloride and H2O include all the charged dipole lone pair electrons curly arrows uh, as appropriate okay so first uh, you need to draw a lone pair on oxygen uh, one lone pair is enough but actually two uh, there are two lone pairs on oxygen so after you draw the lone pair you need to draw the dipole the dipole on uh, partial positive on carbon partial negative on oxygen if you want you can put partial negative here no problem Okay, after that, uh, you have to draw one arrow from the lone pair on oxygen's point to this carbon, the carbonyl carbon, or a seal carbon now. After that, you draw another arrow from the CO double bond here to the oxygen. So it means this one it shows that the pi bonds break and these electrons will move to oxygen. And after that, it will form this intermediate. Make sure you put the oxygen with charge negative now, lone pair. And oxygen, because now it has three bonding, so you put a charge positive here. So the whole intermediate is one mark. Another mark is for the uh, three arrows here. So you need to draw one arrow from the lone pair on oxygen point to the CO bond to show that pi bonds reform. After that, draw one arrow from CCL bond point to chlorine to show that CCL bond break. Then the last arrow is draw one arrow from OH bond point to oxygen to show that the lone pair on oxygen is restored. So these two will this one will form chloride and this one will form hydrogen ion. Both they combine to form HCl. So after that you get the benzoic acid and HCl. Okay, part two. Name the type of mechanism you shown in D1. So we know that H2O added to this uh, compound, so it's addition. Then the uh, HCl get eliminated or the chloride get eliminated. So we say that this is the addition elimination re uh, uh, reaction. For part E, a seal chloride reacts with the sodium carboxylate to form acid and hydrate, as shown in this figure 5.1. Uh, this is a bit challenging uh, because uh, it's not really the ordinary question. Uh, uh, it's the, something about anhydrides now. Okay, but however, the guidelines already given you can follow the guidelines and answer the question. Okay, so first, uh, this figure 5.1 is given. The acyl chloride will react with sodium carboxylate and form this anhydride. Uh, basically, is the is similar to addition elimination uh, reaction uh, just now, but now is the the carboxylate. So we know that uh, if they react. So the, this one, the oxygen here in the carboxylate will form a new bonding with the, this uh, acyl carbon. And the CCl bond will break. So the Cl and the Na will form the NaCl and the anhydride will form now. So this is how they react. And 
another figures given the condensation polymer polyanhydride which is this one figure 5.2 uh, and the polyester are formed by similar method the repeat unit for the polyanhydride is shown in this figure 5.2 so now use part 1 use the figure 5.1 and 5.2 suggest the structure for two monomers used to make this polyanhydride so you have to compare this figure 5.1 and figure sorry figure 5.2 and figure 5.1 now okay so look carefully what is the monomers that involved okay so first let's uh, start with this uh, this uh, anhydride bond okay as you can see this anhydride bond okay if it's undergo bond break so this part is belongs to the the carboxylate so you need to add one na to this oxygen and therefore this carbonyl carbon okay, will bond to a corint right to form the acyl chloride after that here is going to have another bond break and this will be the the another acyl chloride form so chlorines bond to this uh, carbonyl carbon to form this acyl chloride so means it will form this compound so means this part this part will form this one So another one, another monomer, it should be this one, the dicarboxylate. Okay, this is diacyl correct. This is dicarboxylate. So here is okay, this oxygen bond to the or the oxide later is bond to the sodium. And this one again, okay, bond break, and this one bond to another sodium so it will form another monomer here right so this will form this so these are the two monomers that will be formed from the comparison okay i hope you understand now last part poly and hydride are biodegradable suggest how this poly and hydride can be degraded uh, just now the question already mentioned polyanhydride and polyester they are formed in the similar way means they can be hydrolyzed means when polyester can be hydrolyzed polyanhydride also can be hydrolyzed or can be degraded because they have the carbonyl group so suggest how this polyanhydride can be degraded so you just need to mention they can or it can undergo hydrolysis using the dilute acid with heat or reflux right so this is how they can be degraded okay that's all thank you